Okay, now I hope most of you know a lot about frauds and scams because they're pretty pervasive. So if you learn three new things today, I'll be thrilled. And we're not having any tests, but if I remember, I'll ask you to tell me some new things that you've learned. And I don't want to scare you, and that's the trouble with doing a presentation on frauds and scams. And um, But the more you know, the less vulnerable you are. So let's all think back to when we were kids. Nobody here is a kid, are they? Okay, you are. Okay, in, in your heart, you're a kid. Okay. Um, so tell me about frauds and scams when you were young, when you were five or ten years old. No? No, this is back when you were old. Oh, that was your parents told you don't talk, yeah, don't talk to strangers. That's probably more in the line of a crime. <laughs> yeah, and not on your part, on the other person's part. Okay. Um, so I guess maybe once in a while somebody came to the door and tried to sell you something that wasn't real. But really, I, I can't remember when I was a kid other than a purse snatching, which is more of a crime. But now, where are we? This is to illustrate frauds and scams as we've gone through life. And if I could make this as big as the room, I would. But you get the idea. They're expanding. Um, just every place you go, there's frauds and scams. People always want to know where they get that. I got it at Mass General. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be a pervasive question. Okay. So, how do the frauds people get to us? How do they find us? What what ways do we get defrauded? Telephone. Telephone. Computer. Mm -hmm. Mail. 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 And what'd you say? Taking out loans. Okay, it could be, but possibly. Yeah, if somebody sells a list to somebody, and yeah. Okay, so we got. The mail, the phone, the computer, how else? A couple other ways. Door to door. And whether one other way that's kind of painful to think of. They might set the stage, but they can't they've got to be able to interact with you some way or other. The other way which you know we have hard kind of guessing about is by family members and neighbors and caregivers. So we'll talk about each of these a little bit. Okay, well, why in the world do they pick on older adults? We're pretty nice people. Why do they pick on us? Why do they really, older adults are the ones that are victimized the most, why? Okay, they think we've got money and they want their share. 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 Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to share with them, but yes, they think we have money. It's like Willie Horton. Why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. And I know that most of us don't have deep pockets, but we have more discretionary money than a lot of people, you know, young families with kids or even younger people. So one is, that's where the money is. Why else do they go after us? Okay, they might think we have some kind of cognitive impairment, and that is really a big issue. Um, especially, I just went to a lecture by um, a person that used to work for the Attorney General's office, and for 30 years his area of expertise was frauds against older adults. <coughs> And so cognitive impairments can be a big one. Okay. Why else? Yes. One of the biggest to me that people are now learning is church related scams. Okay. Church related scams called affinity scams. 
you know, somebody comes in and sort of joins the church, they're around for, you know, a number of months, and they get in with um, everybody friendly, oh, friendly, my goodness, are they friendly? And they maybe get one of the leaders of the church to buy into their scam, and then they tell other people, and so, it, and especially around investments, that's a big place. So yes, affinity scams, and they go through church and, and other kinds of associations where there's a group of people that know each other. Good point. Okay, what else? There's a whole bunch of reasons. We're vulnerable. We're vulnerable. Now why are we vulnerable? Okay, we might not be up with all the latest stuff. And um, just as a point though, you don't have to belong to ARP to be here, but they almost always have articles in the magazine. I didn't bring the latest magazine, but you know the magazine. This one was about family fraud. Um, a couple of issues ago, I think the one before this, the whole issue was on fraud. In the local newspapers, there's articles. On TV, they're occasionally telling us. So there's information all over the place. We just have to pay attention to it. Because there's a new fraud every day. OK, how else? How else do they get us? There are five stoppers, and sometimes they'll say, this is the news of Social Security or something. And people think that it's the news of Social Security that they need. So see if I'm saying this right. It's via Social Security. They might do that. Yeah, but they're saying you need information on your Social Security. This is what you Can you repeat what you said? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very common to hear somebody will call from claim they're calling from Social Security office. Okay, that's that's by the phone. Okay, yeah. But what other behaviors do we have that make us more vulnerable? Well, I'll just give you a few. We're polite. We tend to be polite. And uh, we might have a hearing loss. Sometimes I think these hearing aids aren't much good. On the phone, it's even worse. Um, we're lonely. A lot of people are lonely. They're so pleased to have somebody come to the door or on the phone to talk to. Um, they might be depressed. Oh, here's one, sweepstakes. Okay, we're going to win. Boy, this is exciting, and people get obsessed. And even though other family members say, no, no, it's not real dad, they are not going to give it up. They just get an obsession, like, I'm going to get that money. Maybe some of you, when you got your tickets today, said, I'm going to take it. Um, we, so, so there we get all excited. The grandparent call. Look, has anybody gotten the grandparent call? Hi, Grandma. This is your favorite grandson. And, and you go, oh, Jamie? Yes, it's Jamie. And guess what? I'm in jail in Mexico. I got an arrest, and I've got to have you send me money. And don't tell mom and dad because they'll be so mad. Has anybody gotten that call? You've got to be kidding. No one's gotten the grandparent call. Okay, well, it's pretty, it's one of the more real predominant calls out there. And so they pick up information from the kids' social media. I don't know how they put all this together. These people, spend, you know, they're wizards at this fraud game. So they want you to send money, but they don't want you to run down to Western Union anymore or run over to CBS because the Attorney General's office is saying you can't, you've got to use some judgment on sending money for people. But they'll ask you to send gift card or go get gift cards. You know when I say gift cards, what I mean? Okay, everybody say yes? Okay. And then they bring them home and then they call back and you read them the numbers. And once you've read the number, they've got the money and there's no way you're going to get anything back. 
So anytime a gift card is requested, that's a big red flag. Okay. So that with the for the grandparent call, you get all anxious because you think your grands grandchild's in trouble. But sometimes they call up and say, "This is your favorite grandson," and the person says. I don't have a grandson, click, or, um, you know, so be really careful. So we get situations where people get their adrenaline goes up because they think their grandchild's in trouble, or they get all excited because they think they want to sweep sticks. Okay, and we don't process information as fast as we used to. I know when I'm going to go someplace, I have to stop and think about it a little bit before I just go. I used to just be able to do that, but anyway. And so another thing that we don't do, we tend not to do, is we don't report when we've been victimized. Why? They're embarrassed. They are and we are, right? It's embarrassing to have somebody take advantage of you. If you get nothing else out of today, it's report, report, report because you can help maybe get things back or at least help your friends and your neighbors and family members. The other thing is share, share, share. Tell other people about um, the um, information you learn. So, so we've, got, we've got three different mantras here. Report, report, report. Share, share, share and shred, 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 okay? So that's one of the things on the test at the end, okay? So here we've got, who, well, who do I report to? You know, you tell me to report, but to whom? Okay, the first one on the uh, consumer resource contact list is the Attorney General's office. And right there's a phone number, 877-NO-SCAM. So that's the Attorney General's office and you call and ask for the fraud division. Also, report to your local police and sheriff's office because they're monitoring calls. So we've got one other place, which I'll get to in a minute. The do not call registry. Have all of you put your telephones on the do not call registry? That's a joke. It's a joke. It doesn't work. Oh, you think it's, it gives you an invitation for more calls? <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying. Charities and um, camp campaigns for office are legal and allowed to call you. And if you've worked in business with a, um, a corporation or a business, they're allowed to call you. But we're all getting a lot of those pesky robocalls. And now um, they're working on a federal level to get some of those eliminated. Nothing's perfect, but I think it might help a little bit. I'm not sure, but I think it might help a little bit to be on the do not call list. Reducing junk mail and unsolicited emails right there is a way to um, minimize that. That doesn't mean you'll never get another catalog but I've used it and I get a lot less catalogs than I used to. And you know, that's an environmental waste anyway, unless you want the catalog. And when you do call and order something from a company, like, I like L.L. Bean, so if I call and order something from them, I say, and remember, I'm on the, um, don't send me anything and don't sell, rent, or loan my name and address to anybody. And that's really worked. Or if you have a person that is, is deceased, you know, that's really uncomfortable getting things in the mail from somebody or somebody that's deceased. And that's also how you can get them off the list. Pre-approved credit cards and insurance um, offers. If you don't want those, shred them. Do not throw them in the wastebasket. Shred them because there might be information encoded on them. And um, also, if your credit card, if you use a credit card, sometimes they'll send along blanks to checks for you to use. 
isn't that convenient? <laughs> and if it's convenient, guess who else it's convenient for? So I call up and I say, uh, do not send me any of those checks. And by the way, I think it's very inappropriate to do that. Um, but shred those. Don't throw them in the wastebasket. Well, I'll have a lot of shredding to do, but it, honestly, it really helps. And then it talks about your annual credit report, how to get that. But anyway, there's enough things right there. The other place to report, in this little book, which goes through, it's from an ARP, <clears throat> the Fraud Watch Network. And it goes through a lot of different frauds. But what if you use a computer, what I want you to do, and I wish I had all your phone numbers if you have a computer, and I call you and say, did you sign up for the Fraud Watch Network? Because about every two weeks, you get an email about a fraud from them. Also, you can look up your zip code and see what frauds have been perpetrated in your area. I did that and I found all sorts of interesting things over. I didn't get over here to see what's going on, but it's really valuable. And people say, yes, yes, I'm gonna do it, but they don't, so. How many of you have computers again? Are you scanning them, Waylon, so you can make them be accountable to sign up? All right. So let's just talk about some of the ways we talked about the phone and the mail and the computer and the family and door to door. So let's talk about a few of those nice little frauds. Let's talk about mail. Has anybody gotten anything in the mail that they thought was a fraud? Yes. Uh, Africa. Africa. Uh huh. So yeah. Um, a lot of them are coming from Africa. Let's see if I can find some examples if I brought those. They come from Africa, like Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria trying to find a piece of paper with them on. Okay, well anyway, they come from all over the country. But okay, so be very leery of that. Um, sweepstakes. A friend sent me one that she got in the mail, and now that she got it in the mail, but she also has gotten three phone calls subsequently. Now, I don't know how they got her phone number, but this is very pretty. It looks like that. I know you can't see it, but you can see it's very colorful. And it tells them that they have won $4,500,000. Okay, and congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Your fund is now deposited with the bank and insured in your name, but you're to keep your winnings confidential to yourself. So they try to divide you from any friends, family members. Don't you know? Don't don't tell them about this. And um, to claim your your um, winner. You call Reverend Miguel Angel, Foreign Service Manager of the Diamond Trust Security and Bank, uh, Finance, on the phone or fax for processing and remittance. You're expected to be in the Madrid office to claim and sign your fund legalization documents. So just you're gonna scamper over to Madrid, Spain. <laughs> But if you're unable to travel to Spain, you must be responsible for the costs of home delivery. Aha, okay. A home delivery fee and insurance fee will have to be paid to our accredited diplomat before your certified check will be sent out to your home address. So there you go. Due to false practices, we ask that you keep your award information strictly away from public notice until your claim has been processed and the winning prize remitted to your possession as part of the security protocol to avoid, um, avoid double claiming or unwarranted abuse of this program by unscrupulous individuals <laughs> like themselves. Now she got this two weeks ago, and she, she, you know, they know I do these presentations, so she called me up to tell me about it. I mean, she knew it was false, 
and she said, but she'd gotten three phone calls. And she said, yeah, from the same people. These very nice people in Madrid, Spain, with all this money. And she said, I guess I'll shred it. And I said, don't shred it, send it to me because to bring it out to show people. And have most people gotten something in the mail like this? How many people in the past bunch of years? You have? These people have seem to be very protected from all these evil things. But anyway, good. Okay. Um, okay, in the mail, charities. Okay, now there's a lot of legitimate charities, and there's a really fabulous organization online called CharityNavigator.org. And before you donate to anybody, I would suggest you or get a friend to help you check out that website. They monitor over 9,000 charities. They tell you how much the CEO gets, how much is spent on fundraising, what amount of money goes to the actual purpose that they're talking about. And it's pretty surprising some of the really big, big, big ones, their CEO earns a lot of money and not a whole lot of money goes to whatever cause they tell you that they're trying to support. And I see a lot of heads nodding. So Charity Navigator is a wonderful site because you want to be sure. Okay, so this is still by the mail, and then other charities from around the world that don't exist are sending you solicitations. And also when there's a crisis like a flood or a hurricane, there's legitimate sources, but a lot of false ones come out of the woodwork and work on that. I know some people have been solicited for the Notre Dame fire and you just go, um, I don't think so. And um, a free meal. Anybody got invitations for a free meal? Okay. Probably, and they go to nice restaurants too sometimes. And probably 95% of them are legitimate. But um, when I was living in Etowah, which is a little town between Brevard and Hendersonville, um, a number of people went to one of those free meals and the people, are, you know, want to help you invest your money. And most of them are probably okay. But this one went awry. My friend lost $300,000. Other people lost a million dollars. I went to the sentencing hearing at the federal um, courthouse because the FBI was involved. They got seven cents on the dollar back. And it wasn't just the money. Like some of these people planned to help their grandchildren go to medical school and stuff, but the money was basically gone. So um, probably, as I said, you know, most of them are legitimate, but just be real careful. The other thing about the mailbox is don't put checks that you're sending out in your mailbox if it's outdoors. I mean, mine I gotta walk across the street to, but don't put outgoing checks in the mailbox because you don't know exactly who's going down your street probably. So somebody can just come by and pick it up. And also they do this thing called check washing where they're able to take the name of the company and the amount off and rewrite something which a higher amount in and off it goes. Then what do you do? So take your um, checks to the, to the post office or someplace where you can put it in an enclosed box. Okay, any questions or other things that have happened in the mail? Yes. No, I was thinking of the phone that say, is this Helen Keller? And they want me to say yes. I'll say, who are you calling? <laughs> okay. I never say yes. Okay. So we'll just move right out of the phone. Okay. So they might call up and ask, is, if, is this you, as you had? 
I've had a person call up and say, a very nice sounding woman call up and say, can you hear me all right? And I said, yes. Oh. All they need That's all they need. Now, nothing has happened. Eat, and you always say, can you hear? Well, not real good. But it's enough to have made the contact. Yeah. But you know, you don't ex You just said yes to buying 10 years of magazines. <laughs> <laughs> or any, I mean, I've gotten calls about needing my knee brace or my back brace. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want those. <laughs> and, um, oh, and of course, they're going to be free. You know, Medicare will pay for it all. Anyway. Um, okay, charities. Back to charities again. Phone calls about charities. Anybody gotten those? Come on, you guys. I know you have. Yeah. And they start off real friendly, and how are you today? And mm -hmm. So they're friendly? I don't get them because I don't answer the phone if I don't recognize the number. If someone calls me and wants me to return the call, I'll leave the number. Okay. Well, hang on to that idea because we'll get to that one. Yeah. So not answering the phone. I mean, like these police and sheriff and fire department. Uh -uh. Yeah. Hang up or say, um, well, send me the literature. I'll be glad to look it over. Yeah. Um, but you know, like you say, the Red Cross is calling, right? That's a good organization, right? But somebody can buy that to put it on your phone ID. I mean, so again, your suggestion, even if it's a number you recognize, maybe just let it go to the answering machine. I've gotten calls from my own phone number. My caller ID said it was my phone. I didn't answer that because I thought I, I talked to myself enough as it is. <laughs> Okay, um, so charities, and they, oh, now somebody mentioned Social Security. Social Security called you up lately? One time. One time they did, huh? You, okay, Social Security is not going to call you. Um, but they can call and they say, you know, there's something wrong with your account and you're at risk of losing your uh, benefits and we're really worried and we want to get this straightened out and then they ask for some personal information. How about the IRS? <laughs> How many have gotten a call from the IRS? I can't believe you. I mean, I've gotten so many of those. You've gotten them and other people are too shy to tell me that they've gotten them. <laughs> We've all gotten a bunch of them. And they're a little on the hostile side. Yes. yes. And that you owe money and you're at risk of being arrested. And the police are on the way to get you. And there's a number to call back. If you hurry up and call back and pay this. But we don't want credit cards anymore. We want those gift cards. So. Somehow they've got enough time for you to run down and get a gift card. <laughs> if you call somebody and you can give out your credit card information or personal information, if they call you, don't give information. Now I know people have told me they like to play, they sometimes know it's a fraud or a scam, and they like to play with these people. I would suggest not doing that um, because Fraudsters sometimes work out of phone banks where a whole bunch of them are in the room doing all sorts of things. And that, you know, then they would maybe give your name to another fraudster. And um, I would just say, hang up. Just keep it as clean as you can. Oh, you get calls that say, um, I'm not just exactly sure what they say, I can't remember, but if you if you want to keep if you want to hear from this organization press one if you don't press two just right she said they can you can press till doomsday they're still going to call that way they know they've got a live person you know because they they're doing millions of calls so um yeah i used to press two because it was like oh i'm going to get rid of them well no Okay, 
Oh, the other one is a jury duty. You missed jury duty. I see some smiles in there. And that, that's another one where you're going to go to jail. They're on their way. Um, so, okay, let's see what we've got next. Okay, what about at the front door? I gave you a handout at the front door um, about protect yourself from the door-to-door -door home repair scams. And I got that because I did sign up for AARP Fraud Watch Network and I get something every couple of weeks. But spring is a great time for the home repair people. They just happen to be in the neighborhood and they've been doing somebody's um, asphalt down the street and there's a little bit left in the truck or you know enough to really do your good job on your driveway. And so, but they need you to give them the money up front and then they'll come fix your driveway so it's beautiful until the next rain. <laughs> um, don't, just don't do business, and, you know, you want to have a contract, you don't want to give the money out up front because they just kind of disappear. Or they put asphalt on that's a 30 second of an inch thick. And as I said, you know, or they come and they've been, we were just driving by, they've got a truck that says roofing on it. They're just driving by and they said, oh, we glanced up at your roof and they, we can see a problem between the chimney and your shingles. Um, let, you know, can we go up there and look and see what's going on? No. <laughs> <laughs> no because they do that and one person goes up on the roof and you're all out there standing looking up to see what's going on and meanwhile there might be another person that's going through your house <laughs> or they want to use the bathroom no, no. Not she's not yeah she's not letting anybody in yeah there's a bathroom at that gas station down there or whatever um or they might, you know, they come in and they go through your medicine cabinet because we all know what kinds of drugs they're looking for. So don't let anybody in. So, oh, and hurricanes. We're pretty lucky here. The mountains, mountains tend to protect us, but they, you know, after hurricanes taking down trees that have fallen, they're going to do that. And they charge astronomical amounts, and again, money up front. They might do something or nothing, but your money is gone. Okay, now I know a lot of you don't use a computer, but those that do, I gave you a handout from the AARP Fraud Watch Network, and um, it's how to not be a victim of tech repair. So somebody said, the minute, how, what did you tell me? Uh, what did we sign up? Like we go on the computer one day and come around and just look around for a while. The next day I will get a call from Windows saying, well, we have noticed that you have a problem. You have a virus on your Windows. We need to go in remotely and fix that for you. No. No. <laughs> yes. Do it. Again, when anybody calls you, they initiate the call. Be very careful. Um, because they want access to your computer. I just tell my son, is a, uh, my son and my grandson are computer techs. They take care of my computer. I don't need to Okay. Um, so she's got a lot of expertise in her family. Can I borrow them? <laughs> I've become very good friends with the Geek Squad in the last week. Um, anyway, um, but even, even don't engage with them again because they're calling you, telling you. But also they have, some of the fraudsters have a way they can grab your, grab your computer. I don't know how it happens, but I got a big red thing on my computer with a, me a loud message, yes. And of course by that I'd heard enough about that they, that they do that and then they demand money to free you up. Anybody had that happen? They can put a virus on you. They can put it, yeah, they can install a virus. <clears throat> so I quick called a friend to do something. And I, obviously I'm not real tech savvy. And they came over and we turned it off. And then he looked all over to be sure that I didn't have a virus or whatever. But I don't know how they do this, but they need at least, to free you up, they need at least $290 or some amount. And again, it is really scary when your computer has that happen. But it's one of those frauds. 
Um, and if you get an email and it has links in it or from us an email you don't really know who it is, don't click on the links because sometimes that's the way they can access in. Um, or attachments as well. So sometimes I call somebody and say, did you really send me this? You know, because it looks legit, but how do you know? Um, if you're ever using your computer, and for the computer people, this will make sense. For example, if you want to buy something on the computer, be sure when you look up at the top, that little HTTPS, be sure that S is there. And I notice now a lot of people, a lot of companies also have a padlock. And I know that doesn't make a particle of sense to you that don't use computers. Okay, let's talk about romance. We all want to be special to somebody. Now some of you, you know, you've got spouses, but some of us don't. And we want to be special to somebody, right? Who doesn't? Is there anybody that don't doesn't want to be special to somebody? <laughs> Nobody is claiming this one. Okay, but there's eHarmony and there's lots of fish in the sea or something like that, and there's Match.com, right? You've all heard of those, right? Now don't tell me you haven't. Okay, so people sign up for this, and obviously. You know, you put your bio on and talk about all sorts of nice things about you with a, hopefully nice pictures and what have you. And so you get, hopefully, you get some responses and suddenly you get this response for them as real, let's, let's, let's say it's a woman, okay? You get a really nice response from this good looking man. And you carry on a wonderful correspondence by email. <coughs> and. Um, he works offshore on one of those drilling rigs. <laughs> or maybe he works in the Middle East doing something, I don't know. And um, so in the process, you know, you've corresponded enough that you want to get together. And he's going to come to where you live and um, maybe he's going to spend the weekend at the hotel and all of that, a really nice above board. Um, but suddenly you get an email, and he's supposed to arrive in two days, you get an email, and he's saying, oh, um, let's see what could have happened. Something happened. Something happened. I don't know what it happened, but he can't get there because uh, he sprained his ankle or something. He's got to go to the hospital. But his money, and he, he's already told you he's got a lot of money, so he's real good looking, he's got a lot of money got a house in, I don't know, Pebble Beach, California or someplace. I'm making this up as I go along, guys. And, and you know, so you're really disappointed he can't come, but something happened with him. So he says, can you loan me some money or could you buy me a plane ticket? Well, by that time, you are excited about meeting this guy. He's pretty good looking, he's got money and blah, blah, blah. So you send him some, what, like maybe you buy him a plane ticket, or you send him some money. Well then something else happens and he needs some more money. I mean, but this time you're pretty darn invested because you've been in correspondent and he just sounds the love of your life. And it goes on and on and on. And your friends tell you, you know, this sounds fraudulent to me, don't do it. The other day I was doing this presentation with a group of people and they had the guy being a millionaire and being really good looking and all that stuff. Okay, they were really into this. And apparently there's some way online, I don't know how you do it, but you can take the, take the picture of this guy, this good looking millionaire, and put it and match it up somehow or other. And they found out the guy, this gorgeous hunk, was really a married guy with three kids. <laughs> and some of these are um, come from the U.S. and some of them come from other countries. But again, you've got to be really, really careful. And if that's one of those situations when somebody gets excited, they're, they're you know, as I said, people want to, you know, we all want to be special to somebody. And so, 
Yeah, we're gullible. And I, I don't know what percentage of these really happened, but I know uh, one person that has happened twice. She did find a really, really nice man eventually. And he, he was wealthy too. But anyway, and they're married and everything's okay. But she'd been potentially scammed or scammed a couple of times. Um, another thing about computers, your password. Passwords like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They just don't work. I mean, they're so easy to guess. And your husband's name, your cat's name, your kid's name. No, no, no. Anymore, we need really complicated passwords. So if, the way I do it is I make up a sentence like, I love the red leaves in the fall. I can remember that, right? I love the red leaves in the fall. Okay, so you pick out pieces of that. So you can do capital I, L, it's lowercase um, L for love, um, red leaves. Capital R, you might spell out leaves or you might use another, another some other shortcut of leaves in a fall capital S, and then you need some, um, I didn't have any numbers in there, did I? Um, okay, let's just say if you put the number three in, and then you need a, a um, what do you call those little things? Like punctuation. Punctuation, that's what you call those things. <laughs> then you put a punctuation, and then you write it down. Now, so one of us here doesn't always write them down, so one of us is in big trouble. Um, that's where the geek squad's real good. <laughs> they rescued me. Because I set up my account quite a few years ago. I had no idea what the password is, but they managed to rescue me. Thank heavens. Um, so, but you write it down. So, you know, capital I, lowercase l, and so on. And you've written it down carefully along with your username. Okay. Well, the last one I will just touch on this is family, friends, and caregivers. There was a situation in Cary, North Carolina, over by Raleigh, where the guy wanted his mom to sign over the house to him. I, I have a newspaper clipping on this, and she said no. Well, at some point, she fell. I don't know if she, he pushed her or she fell. He just left her there on the floor until she died and they got the house. I mean, these are some real horror stories. Or people sign the house over and then they kick the person out. So, you know, this is a big caution about not signing things over. Most kids are wonderful, but there are some really sad stories. Or um, now the banks, a lot of the banks, at least I know the credit union where I go, they ask for another person, another contact person, so if I went in, um, they kind of know my pattern of interaction with them. But if I started going in every three days with a caregiver and withdrawing money, they probably would begin to get suspicious and call the other, you know, my contact. Um, so the banks are being more um, upfront about protecting you. And I don't know, if, all of the banks, but at our, my credit union, they always have a lot of literature out on the table by the door about um, fraud and older adults, because they really are um, geared up to help. So, um, so caregivers, might that might happen. Or I've even heard of like people that, you know, um, were back before Uber, that taxi driver that brought over groceries and the woman reimbursed him, but pretty soon he was her new best friend. And they always, eventually that statement that was similar to the one in that nice sweepstakes thing from Spain, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody about, you know, that, that I'm helping you, because they try to separate you from other people. Okay, well, we're ready for a couple of things. What are the three mantras? I told you there were three. Report, report, report. 
Shred, shred, shred. <laughs> and what else? Share, share, share. Share the information. Talk about this. The more you talk about it, it reinforces for you. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You're your own best friend, so continue to be your friend. Okay. So what did you learn today? I said I hope you learned at least three new things, other than those mantras. That's not fair to tell me those. Okay. Don't trust people that come to your front door. Okay, don't trust people that come to your front door. If you want to give to a charity, check it out. Charity out of charity Okay, if you want to give to a charity, check it out on charitynavigator.org first. If you don't use a computer, get somebody else to do it. Because some that are real legitimate, you might be real surprised how much really gets to the cause that they're promoting. If they call you, can hang up. Okay, if they call you, if they initiate the call, either hang out and let it go to the cell phone into your answer machine or don't give out information yeah. but you know another thing that happens is this re refrauding if you get frauded it's a good chance that you know remember I talked about those phone banks they all trade information back and forth so somebody might call and say I heard you got the fraud I want to help you get your money back and I'm going to help you so and they somehow get more money. Um, so it's it's a mess. It really is a mess. So just be really careful. Yes. Never say yes on the phone. Never say yes on the phone. If they called you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So people have learned some new things and I appreciate you being here. And we'll move on to the next step. Thank you.